Drive on mama, buckle up. Drive on mama, buckle up. Andre TV here from driveonmama.com coming to you on a Wednesday morning, almost lunchtime. It is currently 11.38 a.m. We have about two hours that we can work during the lunchtime while my son is at baseball camp and then we'll come back for the dinner slash late night shift and we have our first order for the day. It is on DoorDash, 775 for 2.4 miles. Let's go get that ride. Right. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. And while we were in Panera, Uber Eats sent us a roaming rooster, $6.50 for 1.3 miles going in the same direction. So we accepted that. What a way to start the line. Both orders dropped off, and this is a first. DoorDash sent a stacked order going to Bread First, a bakery, and Burger King for $14.50 for 4.8 miles. I declined it, that is too far. When I only have a couple of hours, I stay under two miles if possible. Then, I drive four blocks and they send me a stacked order for Burger King first, bread first second, 5.2 miles for $13.50. What's the chances those are two different orders that happen to be very close to each other? They sent me the order a second time for a dollar less. A dollar less. Well, anyway, I still declined and we're going back to the app. Yeah, after getting back and declining about 20 between the two apps, we accepted a $4.25 soul spice on DoorDash because it's 742 yards and we were hoping for a stack but no stack. Okay that order is dropped off and it was a dollar fifty tip 275 base pay. We have just accepted our next three orders. Uber Eats five dollars even 0.9 miles we're picking up at Roman Rooster and we accepted a batch on DoorDash $13 3.3 miles picking up at Bandit Taco and Chipotle. Let's go. Okay, we have the Roaming Rooster. That's across the street. And Bandit Taco is here. Let's go pick it up. Okay, let me tell you how that went. So, the Uber Eats, I dropped off in between picking up the Bandit Taco and the Chipotle. Because Chipotle is known to wait, so if I clicked waiting at store or busy long line it's believable so I dropped off the Uber Eats it was out of business we did have to go upstairs it's like 90 degrees and it was walking upstairs no escalator then I got to the Chipotle and it was ready for pickup but your destination is on the left from stating that your destination is on the left I couldn't um, get the order so it still remained whatever the initial times were. So I was booking it the whole way. The last customer, they gave me till 12.58 to drop off. Now mind you, they could have sent me to the first customer first. The first customer was essentially walking distance from Bandit Taco. But no, they sent me to the person down in Upper Northwest first, only to come back to the person that was right next to Bandit Taco around the corner. So I dropped off, it was 12.58 already, 12.59. I was already behind the gun and they're doing construction on one of the streets. So what I did was call the customer, it was a handed to me, the last drop off was a hand to me. I called the customer right at the nine minute mark because I was gonna hit complete delivery. I called them and went to voicemail. Then I called them right back. A gentleman picked up, even though the name of the order was a female. So somebody was buying their girlfriend or wannabe girlfriend some lunch. So I stayed on the phone with him, hit complete delivery right at the 10 minute mark. Fingers crossed, I don't know if it's gonna be a contract violation or not. And then I did meet her at her job and gave her the food. Now, because I was so out of sorts and hot and, and confused a little bit, <laughs> I accepted my next order on DoorDash, 425.6 miles. It's right here at Subway. We're gonna go pick it up. 
and deliver it and then I can check to see if I got a contract violation or not. That order is dropped off and we have no contract violation. We just accepted our next order on Uber Eats, $6.9 miles. We are right here at McDonald's. Let's go get it. Okay, change of plans. That McDonald's is very crowded right now to the point where there are lines behind each kiosk of people ordering. So, I accepted a $5.21 Kava on DoorDash going one mile in total and then they just I was gonna keep both and then they just sent an add-on for seven dollars and change going an additional 2.3 miles but towards Bethesda where I need to go to get my son anyway from camp and it's already 123 so we're just gonna do the door dashes and cancel the Uber Eats and then we're done for this and one. Have a rock at Kava. And what they added new to the address is Ann Pizza. I saw a couple of people leaving with lunch today. They're not on the apps yet, but get ready for that fun. But let's go get these lunches. Okay, last order dropped off. Let's see how long it takes to get to the kitty kid. Okay, it is now 2.03 p.m. We will be to the keepers within the next two to three minutes. So it would not be officially late meeting. You have to call the parents. But coming back for the evergreen concept for today. Dash time versus active time. What is the difference between door dash active time and door dash dash time? Okay, so what the difference is the moment you turn on the app, that starts your dash time. That's, you should be available to take orders. They are counting you in their number for dashes they have on the road and next to rec restaurants. And they are tracking where you are and trying to match and pair you with an offer that is closest to you, regardless of the dollar amount. So, the time that you actually accept an order, you click accept on an order until the time you drop it off take the picture or hand it to the person and click complete delivery steps and confirm um delivery that is the active time so you're only active once you hit upset upset once you hit accept until you hit complete delivery but all of the rest of the time that you are declining orders waiting for orders all of that time is your ooh, somebody broke down is your dash time total so the dash time includes the active time but the active time is the time from when you accept an order to you deliver that order so i'll show you the screenshots before i give you my lunch time total i was active for three hours not active i'm already doing it i was dashing for three hours and 19 minutes, I believe it's gonna say in total. But what I do a lot of times, I dash 30 minutes from my house. If I'm running late and I'm about to miss my dash, I'll click dash along the way before I actually get to the avenue where I like to stay. So that includes all of the time that I'm driving, not getting an order, and even sometimes when they do send me one, I decline it because I don't wanna work in that area. That's why I'm going to Bethesda. So I'll click it before I'm actually where I want to pick up orders and next to the restaurants where I want to be. And that's why my um, dash time is always very high, but the active is usually less than 50%. I'll show you the screenshots and then I will give you the total for the lunch. Drop on, mama. Okay, and just in case you didn't know, if you have a dash scheduled and you are running late, if you hit dash along the way, that will save your spot. Usually they give you about five minutes more than the time it takes to drive. And as long as you get into the zone, by that time, your dash is saved and you can start working. Because in many of our markets, if you miss your dash, you're going to have to schedule for later if there's an open spot. And here comes the man of the hour. <laughs> Come back with that. The shift is over. Relax, sit back, the shift is over. Relax, sit back, the shift is over. Relax, 
Sit back, the shift is over. Relax, sit back, the shift is over. Relax, sit back, the shift is over. Relax, sit back, the shift is over. Relax, sit back, the shift is over. Relax, sit back, the shift is over. Relax, sit back, the shift is over. Relax, sit 